Hello everybody. Um, today is my two year surge anniversary. So I figured I would come on here and talk about kind of a little bit of an update and how I'm feeling and how I'm feeling um, with uh, skin removal surgery looming like less than three months away. Um, so uh, if you're new to my page, my name is Bex. I had VSG two years ago on uh, January 16th, 2021. Um, and my highest recorded weight was 380. Um, I had surgery at 350 after losing a little bit of weight um, pre-op and total because I don't I don't differentiate between what I lost post-op what I lost pre-op because the truth is is I lost all of that weight regardless of whether it was with the help of surgery or not um, so total I've lost around 175 pounds sometimes a little more sometimes a little less um, I'm currently maintaining at about 205. Um, that wasn't my original goal weight. <laughs> my original goal weight was 180. Um, but I had some, I guess I could say bumps in the road. I, I made some mistakes um, and I had some bumps in the road. And first bump was losing my gallbladder at about 10 months out. Um, that stalled me for a few months. Um, number one, because my body was in, I guess you could say shock. Like my body was so, I, I, my, my gallbladder was gangrenous. Like it was going bad. So my body couldn't really lose weight properly no matter what I was eating. Plus I couldn't eat the, um, high protein, you know, higher, uh, not high fat, but you know, higher fat than I was normally eating. Um, I couldn't eat those things. So I, at 10 months had to swap, unfortunately, to um, to some carbohydrates because that was the only thing that my gallbladder could process where I wasn't sick every time I ate. Um, and then of course I had, you know, a second major abdominal surgery, so that put me back. And then when I finally went back to like my normal routine and everything, I started weightlifting heavy weightlifting, which I, I'm not saying it's a mistake in the sense that like I absolutely, first of all, I, I love weightlifting. Second of all, um, it helped me get my personal training certificate. Um, and it also is just, it helped with body recomposition, all those things. However, jumping into heavy weightlifting when I hadn't hit my goal weight yet um, for me, resulted in a weight loss stall. Um, again, I had I was losing inches, I was losing pant sizes, all those good things, but the scale pretty much stalled <laughs> and stopped. Um, and then I feel like I may have messed with my metabolism a little bit because I unfortunately dropped my calories really low for a while and did a bunch of cardio because I was so like desperate last summer. I just have crap all over me, you know, just that's fine. Um, so desperate to meet my goal. So I like, I did some extreme stuff that if I could go back, I probably wouldn't do something that extreme again. But um, anyways, my body just kind of, at, at about a year and a half, my body hit around this weight, within a few pounds of this weight, and just said it was done. Um, and I tried, like I said, I went really low calorie, I did a bunch of cardio, I changed things up, I tried to shock my body and do all those things that they say to do when you have a stall. And my body just kind of went, it's nice. Nice try. Um, so I've kind of had to readjust my goal and I have to say that with, um, this lighting is really making me see all of the crap that's on my sweatshirt. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I, I have a lot of animals, so this is just life. Okay. Um, anyways, I feel like I had to readjust my goals. I had to reevaluate 
like why was 180 so important um and for me i think that number was important because being under 200 pounds was important to me and hitting that goal weight of 180 was like that's when i'm going to be the most successful that's when I like can have my skin removal and I'll be successful and I'll have the best results for my skin removal. Um, and after maintaining my weight for the last almost six months, I feel like there is no specific weight. Like sure, if I lost another 20 or 30 pounds, there might be a difference in my skin removal surgery, I guess, but ultimately I'm below their BMI. I'm a 33 BMI. They're, um, a Phoenix's limit for, um, for surgery is 35 BMI. So I'm below their BMI. So who the fuck cares what the scale says, right? And I'm starting to realize the power that this scale had on me. And I was like looking, I mean, obviously I'm not happy with the skin. I'm not happy with the skin which is why I'm having it removed. Um, and of course, there are lots of health reasons why I'm having it removed. You know, it greatly impedes my movement, um, my running. Oh my gosh, running is so hard with so much skin, guys. And I love to run. Um, and again, why is there just like crap everywhere on my face? What is happening? Okay, refocus. ADHD is happening, guys, sorry. I'm trying really hard to stay on track here. Problem. Anyways. I had to take a good hard look at myself and my body and how I was feeling. And I was like, am I going to be any happier at 180 than I am at 205? I know I have 20 pounds of loose skin and subcutaneous fat on my body that's going to be cut off. So do I need to hit 180 in order to be happy? And you know what? No, <laughs> I can do all of the things that I've wanted to do. The loose skin, once it's removed, will make all of those things that I love to do a million times easier. Um, but I can do all the things I wanna do. Um, I can lift weights in the gym, although, oh my gosh, without the stomach skin and the arm skin, I mean, I'm getting the stomach skin first, but without the stomach skin in the way, I am so excited to do squats. Like, that sounds so dumb, but I'm so excited to do a squat without this, like, six-inch roll of skin and fat in the way. Like, I'm excited to do core exercises without all of that in the way. Like, anyways... Um, but I was trying to just think of like, what's the benefit? What, what is the benefit for me to basically encourage my disordered eating in order to hit that goal of 180? And the truth is, is I did that this last summer. I kind of indulged that disordered eating side of my brain. I did what my nutritionist said. I dropped my calories to around a thousand and I swapped to cardio instead of heavy weight lifting. And I did drop another 10 pounds or so, but then the scale stopped again and it didn't go anywhere. So I went back to weightlifting and I went back to, um, actually I'm eating around 1600 calories to 1800 calories depending on the day sometimes 2000 sometimes 1400 depends on the day um i upped my calories and i feel so much better <laughs> oh don't get me wrong i love cardio um cardio is very important in any you know not just weight loss but anytime you're trying to take care of your body cardio is important but I didn't I don't didn't love being like a freaking cardio bunny. So anyways, I just realized like I'm not unhappy in my body. I'm actually happy in my body. So why do I need to hit 180 and I don't? So I have been maintaining my weight at this weight within within a, you know a few pounds because again not again, I haven't said this on this this video, but I've said it before many times, your weight fluctuates anywhere from like five to 10 pounds a day. 
do not stress if the scale goes up a pound or two it will come back down it's going to be all over the board weight loss is not linear neither is maintenance um but i have been maintaining this weight since um about september so um i will say a couple things is that maintenance is not easy we get so used to after weight loss surgery constant change you know every single week every single day sometimes you get on that scale and the scale's gone down and your brain says oh my gosh you know and you get all excited you get a little dopamine hit from that i'm not gonna lie um and then you hit maintenance and suddenly there's no more change and it's weirdly boring and you start to wonder if you're if you're doing things right or if you're doing things wrong um it's it's a different kind of mind fuck <laughs> than losing weight is and honestly even though i was almost 400 pounds and honestly i think i probably was 400 pounds at, at some point i just never got on a scale um but as somebody who was almost 400 pounds i've been in the in the headspace of losing weight for 30 years, maybe not quite 30 years because I'm almost 36. So like 28 years since I was like eight years old. Basically, I've been on a diet um, and I've had extremely disordered eating and a disordered eating brain for that long, for 28 years. And then we have this surgery that severely restricts our food. And even though it also resets us metabolically, which is kind of the point, it's the cure for metabolic syndrome, which is what obesity is. <clears throat> it also, unfortunately, kind of perpetuates um, eating disorders. We see it a lot within the community of people who, it's like this fucking competition to see how little you can eat. There's, you know, let me show you how tiny my portion sizes are. Let me show you how, how few bites I took you know, here's my macros for the day. I only had, you know, like 800 calories, like, and it becomes this, it feeds the disordered eating, you know, brain. And I, I realized that, um, about six or eight months in, I think I had my first like relapse into my binge eating disorder where all of a sudden, like I refused to eat because the scale didn't go down that week. And I had to like reach out to multiple friends in the community who were just lovely and reminded me that I deserve to eat. And I am happy to say that since that day, I have not relapsed. And every time my brain tries to tell me that I don't deserve to eat or that I should restrict, restrict, restrict because I had this surgery and I should only eat three bites of food or whatever the fuck my brain wants to tell me I should only be eating 800 or to 1,000 calories every day for the rest of my life. That's, it's not true. <laughs> that's not, that's not true. And the people who are most successful after this surgery, who don't have regain, who aren't ill, <laughs> um, you know, who really take care of their body, they are the people who eat intuitively eat real food, carbs aren't the enemy, like, don't stress it if you have regular food, like, we live our lives normally, and I'm not saying that I'm the most successful, I'm just saying that, like, I haven't really dealt with a lot of regain, and I have been very successful so far, thus, thus far in my journey, and I don't think that perpetuating the eating disorder is what's going to make me successful on term because what I got this surgery for was to rebuild my relationship with food because I have been and had disordered eating for 28 years and I or 20 I guess now whatever the fuck a number of years okay 26 I get 27 I don't fucking know it's been a long time and I've been working hard to discard that way of thinking. Um, I recently have been struggling a lot with 
this question of, am I lying to myself? And I'll explain a little bit about that. So essentially when I was in the depths of my food addiction and in the depths of my self-hatred and in the depths of my disordered eating and in the depths of my trauma, um, unresolved trauma, I would binge eat and then lie to myself that I hadn't eaten. Um, it wasn't that I didn't know that I had eaten, like I knew that I had binge ate, but my brain, I think to protect myself from what I had done and the trauma that I had just caused myself, um, told me that I had eaten less than I actually had. And I was also in the binge restrict cycle. So when I was in the restrict cycle, I'd be like, oh, I'm barely eating. Look at me, I'm so great because I can barely eat. And then I would then go and binge, but it was like I wouldn't really acknowledge the binge properly. And then of course my weight would go up. Um, and I think I struggled a lot with this thought of lying to myself. And pretty much, unfortunately, you know, we all know our parents have the best of intentions and they, I don't mean all parents, most parents have the best of intentions and they don't necessarily realize or recognize how words can affect you long term. And this wasn't necessarily a bad thing that my mother did, but she said to me, you know, Rebecca, you're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. And that was a rhetoric that I heard for decades that I was lying to myself all the time. You're lying to yourself. You're eating way more than you think you are. You're eating three or 4,000 calories a day or more. There, there's no way that you could be eating as little as you say that you're eating and gaining weight, et cetera, et cetera. And she wasn't wrong. <laughs> she was right. I was lying to myself, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that it was always a good thing to just hear this constant rhetoric of like, you're lying to yourself, you're lying to yourself. Because now that I'm at whatever, I don't even know whatever phase I'm at, I will eat something because I'm two years out. My stomach has, has stretched. It's not a bad thing. It's fucking normal. My stomach has stretched. I could eat quite a bit more food than I could, you know, one year post-op, I can eat more food than I could, you know, freshly post-op, you know, my stomach is no longer three to four ounces large. My stomach's probably 10 to 12 ounces. Um, I can eat what feels like a normal amount of food and I eat food and I get to the end of my meal and, I, and I'm full, but I'm not stuffed and I don't feel sick. I'm just full. And so I stop eating and I sit there and I look at my food and I go, oh my God, I, I ate so much food and I start to panic. And then I think, well, no, like I didn't eat that much food. I have a small stomach. It's okay. Like I didn't eat that much food. I start to like, you know, rationalize, rationalize and calm myself down. And then I get to the end of that and I go, did I just lie to myself by rationalizing it? Did I lie to myself about how much food I was eating? because it was stressing me out. Am I lying to myself again? And now there's this voice in my head that's constantly questioning, am I lying to myself again? Am I going backwards? Am I repeating old behaviors and I'm just lying to myself over and over again? And I had this conversation with my husband about like, I worry that I'm just lying to myself all the time again, and that I'm gonna be 400 pounds again before I know it, even though I, I'm not really experiencing regain. Mind fuck, I'm telling you, it's mind fuck. And my husband looked at me and and I was like, "Am I eating the way I used to eat at 400 pounds?" And he just looked at me. He goes, "Rebecca, look at your food." And I looked down and I have a bowl of curry in front of me, and it was only half eaten. And normally I would have eaten that whole bowl of curry, a whole bowl of rice, a bunch of pot stickers, and then probably gone home and eaten like an entire pint of ice cream to myself. And I just kind of looked at it and was like, right. Oh, okay, right. He, you know, he's right. I'm not lying to myself. I didn't just eat that entire bowl of curry and then tell myself I only ate half. Like, 
my husband's of course I he knows I'm filming a video so he's still gonna go make fucking noise anyways super helpful long story short I'm struggling with the mental health aspect of it every day it's not abnormal to continue to struggle with the mental side of this this is this whole journey is only like partially physical. The rest of it is mental. Um, I'm struggling with this feeling, of like feeling like I've done enough work to have the skin removed. I'm struggling with feeling like I'm worthy of having the skin removed because I haven't hit my goal and I haven't lost enough weight and I'm still over 200 pounds and being over 200 pounds somehow, somehow like that number in my brain tells me like that I've not done enough. If it was 198, like I feel like my brain would be like, oh, okay, we're good now. You know what I mean? And that's only like a couple pounds away. So anyways, so I'm struggling with that feeling. I'm struggling with feeling like there's still too much subcutaneous fat. Um, I have a couple different scales that I've been weighing myself on that like they, they measure your like fat and your water and your muscle mass and all those things and unfortunately it still tells me that my visceral fat is really high but I don't know how accurate that is because I don't live anywhere where I can get a DEXA scan so unfortunately I have no way to like compare the numbers on the scale to reality but if it's true and I still have all this visceral fat then my brain is like Visceral fat is the unhealthy fat. And so you haven't lost enough weight. So now you need to go on a liver shrinking diet. Like my eating disorder brain starts kicking in and starts telling me all the ways in which I need to like fix, fix things and fix myself, um, which is super frustrating. Now he has a hammer. He's gonna go hammer something. Anyways. super helpful him hammering things and <sighs> I'm okay it's fine it's a really long video I'm so sorry um let's see still dealing with reactive hypoglycemia unfortunately had a bout this morning where my blood sugar got really low had a bout last week a couple bouts like three or four days last week where it was hell I couldn't keep my blood sugar straight to save my life um, no matter what I ate. And unfortunately that resulted in a lot of eating more than I wanted to or, or eating when I didn't need to because my blood sugar would, would dive after a meal. Um, and sometimes that meal had carbs and sometimes it didn't. <laughs> so reactive hypoglycemia is so fun. A um, couple other things I'm dealing with that I've been dealing with for a while, but I haven't talked a lot about is um, irregular periods. I do have PCOS. After surgery, my periods got normal for a while and I was like, great, everything's not fixed, but you know, things are going back to back to more normal, like PCOS is getting better. Um, not true. PCOS is now weirder than ever. I have at least two periods a month. Um, one really long one and then one short one like a week later and then I might have a th two to three week break where I don't bleed and then it's all over again. They're super heavy. I feel like garbage, <laughs> which happens to be today. Um, my blood sugar gets weird right before and around my period. Um, so that's another trigger for the reactive hypoglycemia, I think. Um, and hormones are way off. I'm still continuing to lose a decent amount of hair, even though I'm two years out. I don't, everybody's always like, oh, look at my little hair growths. And they have all these little baby hairs. And I'm sitting here going, where? I have like, like three right there. That's, that's it. I don't have any. Otherwise my little hairline is still super high. I'm still losing hair by the handfuls at every shower. So, but, but my vitamins are fine. So I think hormones maybe to, to blame for this. So I am getting my hormones checked and I'm, um, dealing with low sex drive have been for a while. I had this weird bout last year, um, in the fall where 
it was like I got a really big influx of testosterone or something and my sex drive went through the roof and then all of a sudden it took a dive and it's been in a dive ever since and it's like non-existent. Um, so that's been fun for the marriage. Um, and so again, getting my hormones tested with my new doctor. So hopefully I will have some answers soon for that. Um, let's see what else that I haven't talked about previously. Cause you can view all of my previous videos. Um, yeah, just, just really struggling with this last few months down to the surgery. Um, struggling with feeling like I'm somehow going to fuck it up or it's not going to, I'm not going to have good results. I'm going to be the one person that, you know, Dr. Dry can't make look amazing. Um, I don't think that's true. I've seen like, I've been stalking like all of his patients for two years now, which is why I chose a Phoenix because I've been obsessed with Dr. Dry's work since before I even had weight loss surgery. Um, but I'm just anxious about it all. Um, I'm really grateful that I'm going to have, um, Steph for my recovery and my mother, um, and all the lovely people who have already sent me, um, gifts for my recovery. I'm super grateful. Um, but it's not even that that I'm scared of. Like, and then I'm also dealing with, uh, my, I don't have enough PTO to actually cover my recovery. Um, and short-term disability doesn't cover plastic surgery. So I might lose my job by getting this surgery. So we'll see. This is just, you know, this year. It's going to be a fun one. <laughs>